Welcome to the class meeting video for day two of our unit. Uh, today's class meeting notes have three pages. These top two pages cover problems that were done uh, for our homework last class. And then we've got uh, one page of notes to uh, advance our understanding. But I'll start with the homework portion. And on your homework from last class, you were introduced to an equation for pressure. So that equation right there, pressure being um, the force being exerted uh, divided by the area over which that force is being applied. And so then you had a couple scenarios here. It was a solid box resting on a table, exerts a pressure on the table. I will concede that this is a solid box and a solid table, so at the surface it doesn't seem to uh, go well with a unit called liquids. Uh, but be that as it may, it's our uh, introduction to the concept. And part A says if the same weight box were wider. So what we have here is we have a certain contact area of the box on the table. So it comes through here and then it goes around the back as well and reconnects. So that area, which could be measured in um, square inches, square meters, um, if that box were wider, then the contact area would increase. And so what we have there is we have a same force, but we have a larger area so that A has gotten really big. And what happens is that is going to make a smaller P. So the answer to this one was smaller. I think a lot of people answered that question intuitively, not necessarily referring to the equation, but just thinking from uh, your existing understanding of physics and your intuition, you figured out that if the box were a little bit wider, bigger, therefore contacting more of the table, then the pressure would be less. And then this part B says if the same size box weighed more, so it was a little bit of a visual here, we'll have the um, same size box, so therefore the area is going to be what it originally was, but this... Um, same size box, okay, weighing more. So if it's got more weight, it is um, applying more force to the table. So I'm going to make that a big F. And so that is going to be an increased pressure. So the answer to this one was greater. So the answer to this first one was smaller. The answer to this first one was greater. Um, I'll ask you more of these questions, but, I, but appreciate that you could answer intuitively but I'm hoping to get you a little bit familiar with using this equation as well. And when your denominator gets large for a given force, then that's going to drop the pressure. When the numerator gets large for a given area, that's going to increase the pressure. More on that as we go through the unit. Okay, then this here is the data table from using the online simulation. And I had asked you two questions, and, and what I've got below here is I ended up just uh, copying the answers that I put in the uh, solution, the answer key that I've provided for you. I thought those uh, explain things pretty well. So the first set of data I had you look at was starting at the surface and going below. And those pressures, as you did that simulation, those pressures increased as you went further below. And it's driven by the height of the water above where you're measuring. So it it doesn't matter the size of the uh, bath. It doesn't ha matter how much, how far it goes out horizontally. It doesn't matter the volume in the bath. The only thing you're looking at is what is the height of the water above the point where you're taking the pressure. That's often referred to as water column. So how high is the water column? Um, so what I've said here is the uh, deeper the into the water the pressure was, the greater the weight, uh, the water height above the uh, where you're measuring it from, right? The greater the water height above. And the greater the water height, that means the greater the water weight. And the greater the water weight means the greater the pressure that it's applying to that area. So when you go, that says pressure there. Not very well, but it does say pressure. So when you go deeper and deeper in, in, into a body of water, your pressure is going to increase without consideration for how wide the bath of water is. 
Okay, then the second part that I wanted you to look at was going from the water surface and then going up. And this simulation does show those air pressures dropping. And so the question would be, why do those air pressures drop? And this leads to one of my favorite phrases when we're starting a discussion on atmospheric pressure, uh, gases, is that uh, this favorite phrase is that Earth's surface, we live at the bottom of a sea of gases. So I'm just going to go down here a little bit, and I'm going to draw a little bit of a curvature to the Earth, I suppose. And maybe we'll put a little bit of atmosphere out here. Uh, we'll make it green. That's a green atmosphere. And here we are down here. So I think intuitively, once again, intuitively, when we have a body of water, right, the water is very dense. I'm going to try to shade it just to show how dense it is. And intuitively, students have been answering well that when you go further and further and further into the depth of the water, the pressure increases. Okay, it's not dissimilar for us here at the surface of the Earth. Uh, but what happens is we have to, we're, we're starting at the bottom, and we're going up. And this fluid that we're in is much less dense than water. It's air, but it still has mass to it. So it's, it's, it's still uh, going to have a pressure. And we can breathe in it. So, so perhaps that... Uh, challenges us to make the uh, analogy between going deeper into water and intuitively feeling like the pressure should increase uh, is seeing that same thing happening here. So if we could start at the top of the atmosphere, we'd have no pressure. And as we went into our Earth's atmosphere, we would see the pressure increasing for every meter that we went down. And would it be as noticeable as for water? No, because the air is not as dense. And then when we got to the very bottom of the atmosphere where we live, uh, we would have, uh, by definition, one atmosphere worth of pressure above us. But then if we climb back up in elevation, then uh, the air pressure drops. So that's why you didn't see the, it wasn't as dramatic as going through the water where it's changing at about a tenth of a unit each time you go down. This is changing tens, hundreds, thousands, one ten thousandth of a unit going up. Air is just that considerably less dense than water. But the same idea exists. Okay, and then lastly we'll go to, let's see if we can find it here, we'll go to the new stuff. And um, once again I'm starting with a, with a solid here and I'm connecting it to material from earlier this year. Uh, you've studied the force due to gravity, the force of gravity acts downward. This is shown in the picture to the right in the force diagram to the right. So I would say that all of this here should be somewhat familiar from stuff we did earlier this year. The only difference I, I, I did here is I had the arrow pushing into the dot. When we were doing force diagrams earlier this year, we had generally represented an object with a dot, and then we would draw the arrow coming out of it, saying, oh, that's the force of gravity. Um, and I'm just going to cross that out. Uh, here I did it a little differently. But I had the arrow pushing into the dot. But basically, gravity for a solid, uh, gravity just points downward. And that's what we learned earlier this year. For fluids, and this is a, a, a fascinating property of fluids. When fluids, it has pressure, so it can, is capable of exerting a force. And when a fluid, in this chapter we're concentrating on liquids, um, when that exerts a force, it exerts it in all directions. So the original answer I had in mind for this person here, this, by the way, is this topic you're going to be reading about tonight. But if this person is submerged in the liquid, then they are experiencing forces due to the water pressure. They're experiencing forces on all sides. So every bit of this person's body is feeling um, in a pushing force on it due to the water pressure that surrounds it. And so while gravity just acts downward, if you're submerged in a liquid, you're actually feeling forces all around pushing on you. It acts in all directions. So that's an important point from tonight's unit. The last important point I want to make, uh, I see I'm at 10 minutes, but I'm going to try to squeeze it in. Um, 
no, I'm not going to squeeze it in. Uh, 10 minutes is a, is a good maximum. So let's leave it at this. What the student is learning is that um, water pressure and therefore forces exerted by being submerged in water or another liquid, they act in all directions. We'll leave it at that. Thank you.